Well, with the 17-lap race nearly upon us for the OKN Junior category, let's take a look at the class itself. Uh, ages 12 to 14 years of age, 36 entries, a full capacity grid this weekend with 21 different nationalities joining us from around the world. Uh, this class has honestly been probably the most exciting one that we have seen, uh, but uh, throughout the entirety of the weekend, all of them have delivered some fantastic results. So look at the equipment that they're using. The Kart Republic KR2 chassis have been uh, represented here this weekend with the IAMI uh, OKNJ engine. 125cc restricted to 27 brake horsepower. The minimum weight, 140 kg kilos that is cart and driver included drivers with these engines of course can step up into the senior category with the same engine all they need to do is take out that rear exhaust restrictor and then they bump themselves up and they're in a senior category that's what we love about the okn class well drivers are starting to make their way out on to the circuit let's just remind ourselves one of the grid for this final and of course how these drivers got there but we'll go over a, li a little bit later because tyres that these drivers are going to be using as well this weekend, the Vega XH4s. Only been using these slick tyres today. Yesterday, there was a potential of maybe having to use some wet tyres with uh, uh, rain that was forecasted around about this time of the day, uh, but it stayed dry, so they were absolutely fine. Uh, tyre allocation for this weekend, of course, has always been the one set throughout the entirety of each day. So these tyres that they're using right now, are the same tyres they used for qualifying, qualifying heats and now this final. All of these drivers here have had such an exciting weekend. James Anagnostianis, who won his first race earlier on today. Really, really strong performance from him. See how he can get on at the end of this one. It was a close finish, though. Only finished a fraction ahead of Toby Gale at the line on that one. Toby Gale then came back in qualifying heat two. He won uh, that one. James Anagnostianis dropping to second. But Anagnostianis starts this one on pole position purely because he was on pole for qualifying. So he out-qualified Gale, which means even though they were joint on points, he starts ahead, which means he gets the 25 championship points, which I think means he now takes the lead of the championship because he was one point behind Kasper Reipold, who was leading going into today's racing. They all make their way out onto the circuit. It's going to be a close fight. Gale and Anagnostiadis on the front row for this one. Uh, but it's Angelina Simmons-Torres uh, who has been keeping a close eye on for the majority of this one. She starts on the second row of the grid in race number one for her. She did drop down a little bit into P5. He too was a little bit better though. She stayed in P3. So good results all the way throughout that one. William Marshall, a driver that has impressed as well. Another driver who starts on the second row of the grid. Race number one was good. P3, race number two. A little bit worse off, but came in in an impressive P6, though still only dropping one position. He starts this one on the second row of the grid. He's in a prime position to get this one going. Well, as you can see, drivers now formed up on the grid here, ready to go for their 17-lap final, which should be kick-starting bang on the hour, 3 o'clock, which is at around 11 minutes' time. There you can see the timer on the right-hand side of your screen. Uh, you can see the spectators starting to fill the viewing areas as well as everyone gets ready to come and witness uh, what is set to be, I'm sure, a very exciting final here from uh, the junior category. Brilliant races all the way throughout this weekend and going through uh, all the races that we have seen. We've seen some fantastic ones. Let's uh, go through the grid then uh, very quickly. James Anagnostiadis from Australia then starts on pole position with, Aust uh, with Toby Gale alongside. Angelina Simmons goes from row two with William Marshall uh, from South Africa on row two. Ella Hakkinen had a brilliant qualifying, starts this one on the third row of the grid with Dinia Islamov alongside. Vanessa Shilkanate and Leonardo Peruzzi round out row number four. Keep an eye on them. Again, really good results earlier on. Connor Clancy and Kasper Reipold, who has now lost his championship lead, is looking to reclaim it. What can he do from the 10th spot on the grid? Row number six, Sofia Papaznaya and Axel Nocom round out that row. Again, keep a close eye on them, starting in the top 12. Egon Predrotti and Emilia Vishamirska round out row number seven. Then we'll have the likes of Isaac Say and Michaela Hart on row number eight. Michaela in her first appearance in the championship this weekend. Kesa Ziza and Metis Vitva go from row number nine. They will have the likes of Victoria Farfus and Sara Matsui on row number 10. 
an all uh, row lockout for the Discover Your Drive initiative uh, drivers. Uh, uh, Sujana Dandu and Flavio Carrier go from row 11. They will have the likes of Christian Ebras and Nilas Malik starting on row number 12, just behind them. Again, keep an eye on these two. Had some really good results. Max Murray and Katrina E, who unfortunately did retire from one of her races earlier on today, starts this one on the 26th spot of the grid. Charles Troxler and Amru Adrianzin from Peru in his first uh, appearance here this weekend starts on the 14th row of the grid. Kareen Kaur and Thavre Dukovsky go from row 15 and they round out the top 30 on track. Marcel Sabella and Vera Yurland, also a retirement earlier on in a qualifying heat, starts this one on the 16th row of the grid. Zachary Dole and Oscar Gallin, they lock out row at number 17 as they head ahead of the field behind with row 18. Enna Pazuto and Sanjana Dandu rounding out the entirety of the 36 cart grid the drivers seated ready to get going and there on your screens james anagnostiadis what can we say about uh, anagnostiadis this weekend winner of the final yesterday his first final win of the season as well really looking forward to seeing if he can make it two out of two on this one and try and extend that championship lead but it wasn't all plain sailing for him like i say he did win his first race of the day but race two he lost out uh, by only one-tenth of a second to, Jay, uh, to uh, Toby Gale, who took the win in that second race earlier on today. So make sure, if you are watching this one, these two, I'm sure, will go wheel to wheel at some points, maybe throughout the entirety of that race. Here is Toby Gale, sixth earlier on, second and first for him. Great results after qualifying. Didn't go fully his way, really uh, pushed himself through the field. Great starts all the way throughout this one. And he puts himself now on the front row for uh, this final. And obviously, from what we've seen with him, how many positions he's gained from that sixth spot of the grid, starting at P2, he should fly into the lead going in towards turn one. Everyone else getting ready as well. Further down the grid there, that was Egon Prodotti. You can just see there getting himself sorted out, ready to go for this one. Uh, Got to say, watching uh, all these races, it's been uh, well. It's been tough on the drivers. You know that, that a lot of learning experiences come in uh, throughout all of these drivers. For some of them, they've not raced here be uh, before. Uh, for some of them, they've not been used to you know the conditions on this track. In in this, because of course, at the first round at Cremona, it was raining, it was cold, it was very slippery. That was very tough. Now they've come into hot, uh, challenging conditions. So for some of the drivers here, uh, they've only been racing somewhat a year this is only like their fourth fifth weekend of racing or anything like that for a lot of them they do have a lot of experience and speaking of experience angelina simmons here uh, will talk from experience third in qualifying today fifth and third in the qualifying heats was pole on qualifying yesterday uh dropped down a little bit in the qualifying heats but today much much stronger performance here and really consistent performance as well and she starts this I would say, in probably the best starting spot on the grid. P3, you can judge and you can see where the pole sitter jumps off the line. You have the inside line going into turn one as well. You do benefit it from it massively. So we'll see what Angelina Simmons can do from that second row of the grid. William Marshall, however, from South Africa, who was on the podium yesterday, starts this one on the fourth spot of the grid. Fifth in qualifying, third and sixth in the qualifying heats. And again, Really, really strong performance from the young man from South Africa. Really, really good to see he's uh, come on leaps and bounds over the course of this weekend and the season as well uh, as we head to Francia Corta next uh, for so many drivers. Again, that track is a brand new one for them as well. So, you know, it really is great to see so many drivers uh, learning the, the, the craft of karting uh, in this championship and uh, for some of them really showing the, the true levels of racing that we have not yet witnessed in uh, top level international karting. There, Ella Hakkinen, who starts this one on the third row of the grid, fabulous qualifying uh, this morning, uh, put herself on the front row of the grid and that really benefited her uh, going into these qualifying hits. She starts this one uh, on the third row of the grid in P5 and again is in a prime starting opportunity on that inside row can really capitalize on both Anagnostiaris and Simmons breaking away at the start following them in through turn number one. We'll have the close company of Dinia Islamov starting alongside the driver of the number 27. Again, relatively good results in this one. First, he didn't go fully his uh, way. P11 uh, for Dinia Islamov but race number two 
was a good one. Just finished outside the top three in P4, but gained six places in that race. So again, good results there for Islamov. Really crucial to see what he can do from that sixth spot of the grid. He's jumped up a fair few rows from his original starting spot as well when he was starting on the fifth row of the grid as well. Just behind uh, Lithuania is uh, Vanessa Shilkanate, who starts on the seventh spot of the grid. We'll have Leonardo Peruzzi alongside. Uh, Vanessa having a really good uh, run of races uh, this weekend, starting in a really good spot. Race number one was a nice one, gained positions and finished in P7. Race number two, a little bit uh, struggled in that one as well, but uh, still, uh, you know, good, good result overall. Uh, in this weekend, and uh, we're really curious to see what she can do. Uh, it didn't go fully away in the uh, second one, was uh, disqualified actually in that race, but still, after the good result in the first one, it puts her in a good position for this race still. So she's on the inside row, she's there on the fourth row of the grid, and we've seen drivers win kart races in these sort of situations from even the fifth row, or we've actually seen it from even the ninth row of the grid, drivers coming through. There is Leonardo Peruzzi, who starts this one alongside seventh, uh, in qualifying sixth and a tenth uh, as well. So good results, strong results still always within that top 10. So again, keep an eye on Pulitzi to really fight his way through the field on this one. We always have seen uh, his overtakes throughout this uh, racetrack. And, uh, you know, there have been some good ones. We've been watching very closely his progress so far in this championship, and it has come on uh, quite some way. Uh, there, a little further back, Egon Prodotti as well again there on the seventh row of the grid uh, has uh, Sofia Pavaznaya just starting ahead uh, for this one. The Italian starting on the sixth row of the grid. We'll have Axel Nocom uh, starting alongside from the Philippines. Axel Nocom's got a, a, a big fan following uh, who will be watching from all the way from the other side of the world. So uh, plenty of fans there watching the Axel Nocom uh, race today. Uh, there a little further back there is Emilia Vesemirska just getting herself ready to get seated. She starts behind Axel Nocom, actually, in the 14th uh, spot on the grid on row number seven, uh, primed and ready to go for this one. Big, big shake-up in the order for this one because the championship only in its second round, and each round has its two-point scoring opportunities. They have, uh, obviously, yesterday was a full day. They had uh, qualifying, qualifying heats in the final uh, today, exactly the same. They had qualifying this morning. They've had their two qualifying heats. They now go into their final. This one is the important one. Uh, as you see, Patricia, there, the chief scrutineer over the course of this weekend, making sure the, uh, the driver's carts and everything like that is all uh, above board, all legal out there, so no one uh, trying to take advantage of anything. I mean, the engines themselves are sealed uh, units anyway, so you can't really do anything with that. Uh, and obviously, everyone is on the same equipment. So if there is any inconsistencies, it's actually quite easy to spot in the end. So uh, yes, um, Patricia and, of course, Darren Clark doing a uh, wonderful job uh, in the scrutineering department, making sure everything is staying well above board. There's a look a little further back in the field. You could see there's Javier Dudkowski just picturing the circuit there uh, in his helmet as we uh, wait for these last few moments to get going. We're not far off. Uh, from going for the start of this one. We should be going on the hour, which is, uh, well, probably the next minute or so. As uh, you can see, everyone lining up the Grand Stands area there to get a good spot, ready to watch this race. Of course, this is the longest race these drivers will have done over the course of the weekend. They had the same uh, length race yesterday, but 17 laps. It is a long, old race around a 1.4-kilometer circuit, a 24-kilometer race distance. Uh, in total that these drivers will have to deal with. And uh, that in the, the heat that we have got here at Valencia at 26 degrees currently, it's going to make it a little bit of a challenge, but no more so than when we head to uh, the Middle East later on in the season. I'm sure it's a little bit hotter there. There is Conor Clancy uh, again. Really good results here. Conor Clancy who's not, uh, who's not raced here before. It's his first weekend here, as he was uh, telling me this, uh, this weekend, but still having some really good results as Conor Clancy, really shown some great pace and great commitment. And when we've been watching these uh, qualifying heats, he's been up there in that sharp end. He's been battling away with the drivers at the front, not afraid uh, to get his uh, nose clean or nose dirty there, getting through uh, the order. So keep a close eye on all of these drivers. There is a look at some of the mechanics out there as well. 
Uh, but uh, everything going to be sorted out. Now, I have been told that there might be a slight delay to the starting procedure of this race. Uh, so I think they're just trying to finalise some uh, moments out there. There's some of the marshals out on the circuit. Again, hats off to the marshals. We could not go racing without them. Uh, they have done a fabulous job to make sure the track stays nice and clear, uh, keeping the drivers nice and safe as well. So big hats off and uh, round of applause to the marshalling team here at the Lucas Guerrero circuit. Uh, like I say, without any weekend, we couldn't go racing. Now, uh, that's another grid uh, or something that's being handed out there. Yeah, it is another grid that we're seeing here. So uh, now maybe something wasn't uh, finalised at the moment. Uh, let's listen in and see what's being said here. 21. Well, as you can see there, there are some changes happening uh, there around the middle point of the grid. So my grid here will be wrong. So hopefully, uh, I'm sure someone from timing uh, will come in and uh, present me with an updated uh, uh, grid that we have. But clearly, you can see there's some changes going on there. And it's happening around the middle part of the grid. So you can see there, Ross Upton, the chief grid, uh, grid officer, is just trying to sort things out here. And of course, it's not just a case of one go forward, one go backward. You've got to switch com sides completely. So uh, there you can see now that number 26 is in the 10th spot of the grid. Uh, so that is a big change there. So, OK, so that's Sofia Pavasniaya, who's gone up to now 10th place. So she's been promoted at one position. So Kasper Reipold, where has he gone? Has he gone up to 9th or has he gone backwards? Uh, that is the ultimate test. I'm going to have a quick look uh, on my... Uh, screen here to see if I have got an updated uh, grid for the final uh, and I'll have a uh, brief look and uh, yes I think I do have one so uh, where is Casper Rypod? Okay so Casper Rypod has gone forward here. rypod has gone to eighth place on the grid now uh, so who is missing from that order? Um, Peruzzi's there in seventh place so Peruzzi's gone forward as well uh, who is missing? So we've got Anagnostiadis, who was starting on pole still. Then it's Toby Gale. That's not changed. Uh, Angelina Sim is still there. William Marshall is still there as well. Ella Hakkinen is still there. Isamov is still there as well. Then it goes to uh, Peruzzi. Okay, so it is Vanessa Shilkanate who has moved uh, from the grid here. Uh, she has been put all the way down, actually, to 21st place. So Vanessa Shilkanate who is, spoke, well, on my first initial grid was starting seventh place, has tumbled now all the way to 21st. So that means that is a lot of carts that now need to move on that uh, pre-grid here. And it looks to me like they've actually got that one done. I think they're just working on the last few things in the background there. So that's a bit of a shake-up then. And that can actually be a distraction for quite a few drivers now because for a lot of them, they've just gone from knowing they're starting on the inside row uh, now to be switched to the outside of row number or the row that they're on. So uh, that's going to make a, a, a big issue for some of the drivers. And I'm sure some of them may not be too pleased about that, but uh, there's nothing they can do. Uh, the grid did just change uh, last moment. So we are looking at a start here in around three minutes time. There you can see the board up at the front of the grid. So we are slightly behind schedule at the moment, only by four minutes or so. Uh, right now, but uh, as you can see, drivers now once again preparing to get themselves ready to go uh, for this one. I do get handed a uh, updated grid, thanks to the hardworking people in timekeeping uh, who have done a fabulous job over the course of this weekend. There is Case Aziza, who's starting this one, I can confirm now, with an official grid on the 16th spot of the grid. Uh, again, Case Aziza, really strong performance in the championship so far, uh, but Again, this weekend has struggled just that little bit. Had a moment earlier on with a retirement in one of his qualifying heats. Uh, there you can see Gonzalo uh, Planta there just walking off the grid. Again, contractually obliged to say nice things about Gonzalo because, again, he's giving me a lift home. Uh, but uh, really good uh, guy there working very hard uh, throughout the entirety of this weekend. Uh, there is James Anagnostiadis, again, still starting on pole position. He's not had to worry about that uh, mix-up of the, uh, the grid. He was absolutely fine at the front of this one. Uh, a win and a second place earlier on secured his uh, pole position start with this one. So he has had a really strong performance this weekend. Looking 
for another win all the way throughout it. There is the number 26 of uh, Sofia Papazniaya, who's now on the outside uh, of the grid. So again, she's now going to have that difficulty of trying to get back across now. Uh, we'll have the likes of uh, Leonas Peruzzi, who's now been promoted to... Uh, uh, seventh spot on the grid and now to the inside so that actually helps him out quite a little bit there uh, at the start of this race so he does benefit uh, a little bit from that so uh, there are some ups and downs to a grid changing last moment but uh, all things considered it's been sorted out relatively quickly not far away from getting this final underway the board goes up at the front it's nearing the time uh, to get this final underway lots will be happening over the course of this one and uh, Yes, all the drivers there getting up, formed up, ready to go. Reminder then, Anagnostiannis leads the championship now. He's overtaken Kasper Reipold. Uh, there were one point between the two of them. And with the wins earlier on, uh, with uh, the 25 points going to Anagnostiannis' way, uh, he has jumped up to the top of the championship standing. So he's going to be the one uh, that we need to keep an eye on over the course of uh, the rest of this championship. Can he maintain that championship lead in this final or will he drop back at some point in this race? We just don't know. The tyres that they've used are the same tyres that they've used all the way throughout qualifying and the qualifying heat. For some drivers, they may have used them a little bit too much. For some drivers, they may have looked after them quite well. They may start a little further back in the grid, but now this is where we could see drivers really come through the field now. We just don't know. We are going to have to wait and find out. The whistle blows. The engines fire up as the drivers now make their way on to the starting lineup. We go on board with Ella Hakkinen for this one. She's had a fantastic weekend of racing. Really curious to see what she can do now, starting this one uh, on the inside of row number three. Uh, let's quickly run through the new order now as it has slightly changed somewhat. I will read it through from my official grid in the commentary box. James Anagnosianis and Toby Gale starting on the front row of the grid. Angelina Simmons and William Marshall going from row number two. Ella Hakkinen and Dinia Islamov round out row three. They did not change. Ella Hak uh, then it's Leonard Peruzzi and Kasper Reipold. They go from row four uh, from Conor Clancy and Sofia Pavaznyaya on row uh, five. Axel Nocom and Egon Prodotti go from row six from Amelia Vichemieska and Isaac Say on row seven. Michaela Hart now starts on the inside. We'll have Casey Zizer alongside. Matthias Vitva and Victoria Fasfus uh, goes from the ninth row of the grid. Salamat Soy and Sujana Dandu round out the top 20 on row 10. From Vanessa Shilkanet, who's been put to the 21st spot on the grid. We'll have Fabio Carrier alongside. The rest of the grid should be as original. Christian Ebres from Malik. Then it's Murray from Katrina E. Troxler from Adrianzen. Kareen Kaur from Dubkovsky. Cabela uh, from Yerland. Delay from Gallen, Pazuto from Sanjana Dandu on the 36 spot of the grid. Drivers out for their formation laps now. And again, tension starts to build here. Tires have been worn down. Drivers have been worn down. It's been two fully busy days of racing for all of them. But it falls to, all falls down to this one here. There's a look at race control. Head of race control, Joanna Falcao. Uh, and joined by Gonzalo Planta in there, keeping an eye on all the drivers throughout this race weekend uh, with a smackering of cameras out in circuit. I think 34 in total uh, cameras that can see uh, a pin drop. And then plus, of course, the broadcast cameras that you see here all get used uh, for the race control's purpose to make sure all the racing stays nice and clean. Well, drivers make it way onto the back straight now. The last few uh, moments to get temperature into those tyres happens. Again, it's a very coarse tarmac here at uh, Valencia, quite rough and hard on the tyre. Uh, so again, it has been a real test of a driver's skill uh, going into this one. The final yesterday, it was Anagnosiadis who took the win from Marshall and Conor Clancy. Today, who will it be? Into the tram lines. Are we going racing? Yes, we are. We are green and racing here at Valencia in the junior final. There's carts off in the background there as the marshals quickly run to the scene. They'll clear it up quickly, but the race gets underway and it's Anagnostiadis who gets away well. It's the number 15 that's gone off the track there on the inside. That's Nilis Malik, unfortunately, who's out of this race into the pinch point at turn number three. Everyone gets through it cleanly and it's all a good getaway for the rest of the field. There it is, uh, Nilis Malik, not happy at all as he unceremoniously walks to the start-finish line marshal post. Uh, he'll be not happy starting the final like that. Anagnostiadis, though, leads the way still from Toby Gale, who's slotted into second place. Nice, clean start for them. 
You can see there that uh, it's slotting into third place is Angelina Simmons in the number 23. She is pushing herself along nicely, but Gale here is right on the rear bumper and he's not going to wait around at all. Straight into the race lead. No quarter given at the end of the opening lap. It's now Toby Gale who leads the way across the line. And Agnostiadis then will try and fight back here, but again, he's not able to find the gap down the inside in towards turn one. Angelina Simmons is trying to close in as well as the close company of Ella Hakkinen, but uh, just behind him, P4, who is under pressure from William Marshall, who finished on the podium yesterday. Marshall will be a threat to Ella Hakkinen as they come through, wanting another podium finish today as well as yesterday. But eyes will stay fixated on these two here. Anagnosiadis, maybe did he push those tyres too hard too early on in the weekend, or is he just biding his time here? He's just waiting for the right opportunity to go for that race lead, or he might just stay behind and push Gale along. We just don't know. Of course, if he goes for the move, Simmons Torres will be right there. Ella Hakkinen will be right there. We just don't know. Here's a look at the start then. So now what happened to Nilas Malik? This was on the 12th row of the grid. Uh, now, oh, there's a little bit of contact there, a little bit of jostling. And yeah, there was a, so there was another cart involved. Now, Nilas Malik was uh, racing alongside uh, Christian Ebris, Max Murray, Katrina E, Flavio Caria, and Vanessa Schilkene. It was all in that area. So maybe involved in that one. This is Ella Hacklin's view of the start of that race. The inside row, you can see a uh, nice time, but you can see how committed Gale was on the outside line there through turn number one brilliant to see and holding on to uh, that spot ah this is another angle of the start oh yes you can see there the the contact that happened uh, again couldn't quite see who it was with uh, but scary scary moment on that start finish straight and uh, oh actually maybe we can see who it was with I think that was with the number 46 I'm not too not too sure actually yeah couldn't work, quite work out the number there were so many carts in and around that area but uh, still one of them just tangling and unfortunately for Nilas Malik out of this final. Race has carried on and the train still nice and close. Gale and Ignaciades Simmons from Hakkinen, Peruzzi from Marshall. Islamov as we go on board with Hakkinen. Oh, very late on the brakes there. I thought that was going to be straight into the back of uh, Angelina Simmons there, but very controlled uh, still to get that cut back in line. Uh, on board here, clipping the apexes through the infield section now through turn six and seven as they wind it up now through the revolutions down the infield straight in towards turn 11. Get heavy on the brakes for this one as you turn it left and then into the quick right, back on the power, feed it through. You can get on the power really early there because the corner opens up onto the back straight as they make their way down it now, the 135 meter back straight then into the braking zone of the final chicane. And there's gonna be a change there for second place. And it is Angelina Simmons into P2 now down the inside of James Anagnostiadis, and he is down into P3. Here comes Marshall now on Peruzzi. Peruzzi, who was up into P5, is going to lose out now and go down into P6. William Marshall back into P5. Well, Ella Hakkinen, who was just, again, sitting there in P4. She's not chopped or changed at all. She stayed there in P4. She is up a position from P5 as Anagnostiadis fights back on Angelina Simmons and sends her back down. This, is, this releases Gale now. Toby Gale has broken away from now this chasing pack. This is a dangerous spot for this group to be in because they're all thinking, right, let's, let's scrap away between ourselves. I, I want to get to the front of this pack. I want to lead it. I want to try and close up. The problem is the more they do that, the more they're just going to lose out now. This, it's it's going to mean like these drivers now really need to focus uh, on working together now to close that gap up. But the, the only question is that have they got the pace? Have they got the pace to do it? Looking at the sector times and the lap times, well, Toby Gale wasn't the fastest driver on circuit. That actually went to Connor Clancy, who was on the podium yesterday uh, in this race. Uh, but he sits a little further down in the order currently in P9, so he's not gained or lost any positions. Uh, but he is the fastest driver at the moment. So he's closing in on this group here. But this group isn't closing in on Gale right now. The gap is extending to six tenths of a second. So Gale leads the way as a change here as down the inside. Marshall gets through on Ella Hakkinen and now moves up into P4. So Marshall now in touching distance of being on that top three spot again. And you can see here that the gap between himself and Simmons could close down here. Simmons still looking very strong. 
there in third place. Trying to close in on James Anonosiadis. The gap, though, between himself and Gale, it just keeps extending now. It's up to six, uh, seven tenths of a second out of the race. And with heavy damage to the front, that is Christian Ebras. Unfortunately, the driver of the 45 is out of this race. And that is at the final chicane there. He's, he's sent it. He's backwards, uh, facing backwards in the pit lane entrance. So uh, Marshall's very quickly on the scene to clear that. Because uh, obviously you cannot block the pit lane entrance there. But uh, yeah, for Chris Hebris, he's uh, unfortunately out of this race. And uh, that is a huge shame for him. No idea how that's happened. And uh, well, he puts his hand up in the air thinking the same. What happened there? Well, race continuing. And the gap for the race lead. Toby Gale leads the way. Now clear by eight tenths of a second. Is continuing to open up that gap from this battle here. Anagnosiadis, Angelina Simmons and William Marshall. Here on board with Ella Hakkinen. Uh, what are we going to see here? Is this the moment? Uh, no, I thought that was the moment that Marshall got through. Uh, but no, that was a bit later on. Peruzzi has now got through into uh, P5 as well. Simmons uh, now under pressure a little bit more from Marshall. Marshall has closed right in now on that rear bumper. Simmons needs to be careful here. Any mistake will render a move liable there. Right, ah, this might tell us how uh, we lost... Our number 45, Christian Ebras. Oh, wow, yeah, just straight off the track there, I think. Is that... Well, that is not good at all. He will not be happy with that. And, uh, yeah, out of this race. Well, that is uh, never a nice way of seeing a driver exit out of it, but uh, certainly he will not be pleased. We're on lap eight now of 17, nearing that halfway point of this race, and it's still being controlled by Thailand's uh, Toby Gale. Back on board with Ella Hakkinen. Currently sitting a little further down in the order. Still in a good spot, though, in P6. And you can see here the racing lines, how physical it can be. It's hitting those curbs on the, uh, the runoff there through turn three. Again, very bumpy, very harsh on a driver. Uh, they are not nice to run over. And, of course, these drivers running over them at uh, quite a high speed as well. Through the uh, triple left-hander then onto the infield straight. No change. Uh, change there, though. Marshall's managed to get through, and this is how that's happened. So William Marshall is now up into the top three, and it was through turn number one. There you have it. And uh, again, nicely sent, and immediately communicating there with Simmons, just saying, right, come on, let's chase down Anagnostiadis. Let's close that gap up. Let's see if we can get up to P2. Marshall here, I think, will be delighted with a, a P2 finish in this one. Really uh, good result yesterday again with a P2. Can he get another one today? I'm sure another podium, he'll be happy with it. But he knows he's P2 worthy. Uh, the only question is, is that could he possibly close up to uh, Toby Gale? I think that's going to be uh, a little hard to do now. Gale is uh, clear by over a second now. And you can see here the difference between the, uh, the two drivers over this weekend and uh, over today as well. Uh, qualifying very different uh, for both of them. First for Anagnostiadis, fifth for Marshall, uh, and the heats as well. First and third, second and sixth. They've been in around the same area uh, of the track over the course of this weekend, but have not had direct contact for a lot of it. But right now, yesterday they did. Today they have as well, as he is closing this gap up now. William Marshall has closed in, and he is going for the lead here of uh, this battle. Can he get into second place of this race as we go on to lap 11 now? There's a look at the virtual championship. And Ignatius confirmation there. Clear by some way now ahead of Casper uh, Reipold. Marshall third in the points. Just one point clear of Gale, who currently leads the way here. Hakkinen uh, still fifth in the championship ahead of Clancy. Really good results for all of the drivers and very close in the championship still. Here's a look at uh, Gale and Anagnostiadis. This is a, a, a quite a drastic difference in terms of qualifying. Gale qualifying P6 earlier on today has had to fight his way through those qualifying heats. And, and that was the sort of worry that maybe he's used a little bit more of his tyres compared to uh, Anagnostiadis because he's not had to fight as much. He's been riding at the front. He's just been driving around, uh, keeping consistent. He's only had a little bit of scrapping, uh, but he's not had to work too hard versus Gale, who really had to fight through this order a little bit to, to get up to these positions. Now, I'm seeing a warning flag coming up on the screen there as well, and that is for the number 20, unfortunately, that is seeing a warning flag, and that is Emilia Bishamirska, unfortunately, 
who is going to receive that warning flag. And that comes with a five second in race time penalty. She will not be happy with that at all. She currently sits in 18th place as well on the grid. So it's not been the best final for her so far this weekend. Eyes back on the race leader and Toby Gale, who leads the way now by less than a second. And Ignosiadis has started to reel in uh, the race leader, but is that only in response to Marshall closing in? Uh, could they potentially close up all the way? I mean, we always talk about it that, uh, you know, two cars work better than one around a track that promotes slipstreaming, promotes a tow. But the gap, again, it stays the same. It's not coming down at a rate that I think worries uh, Gale. I think he just needs to, to focus on it. This is another look at what happened uh, to Christina Ebras. And again, yeah, just under braking. And was there contact there? I didn't see his head go backwards, but it, it would make sense if there was contact because, of course, under braking, uh, yeah, just not uh, what you want to see at all. And I think that could be the reason why uh, we see the Warner flags going out in the race as well. Well, again, Anagnosiana still holding on to second place. Not able at the moment to really close in on Gale. The gaps and uh, staying roughly the same. Battles behind, though, starting to look interesting. Hakkinen, Brutzi, Clancy and Islamov still there. The only change on that last lap would have been uh, Flavio Karian's uh, Sofia Pavaznyaya, who's dropped down a little bit there. Let's have a look a little further down in the order, actually. Let's have a look at some of the, uh, the movers in this race. We'll keep an eye on the battle on your screen. Uh, Max Murray has gained 11 positions in this race as well. He's up to P14, having a good run. Victoria Farfa's six places gained, is there in P12 as well. Uh, you've got uh, Eda Pazuto, who's gained 10 positions in this one after starting 35th. is now 25th uh, in this race and is making their way through the field. Uh, Salamat Soy, nine places gained as well, is now in the top 10 in P10. So uh, a lot of drivers having a very good run in this race. Keep an eye here on Leonardo Spruzzi, who's currently in P6. They're only chasing down Ella Hakkinen, back with the second place battle here. Marshall reeling in at Ignosiadis. Not going for the move just yet, though. Staying behind, not close enough for an attack. I think there's been uh, attacks further behind, though, as uh, Hakkinen's clear. I think Perutzi, Klartzi and Islamov are starting to get involved in a little bit of a scrap now as we're on lap 15 of this race. Uh, always focus on this one. Gaps back to over a second as well uh, between Gale and Agnosiidis. So uh, the pace, again, it's keeping consistent, but uh, not enough to close in. It's really down to this one here, the last spot's on the podium. I've got to say, is Simmons closing in on Marshall? What are the sector times looking like? Simmons through sector one on that last lap was actually significantly faster than William Marshall on the, through sector one. Sector two, personal best for Angelina Simmons, and that was a whole tenth faster than William Marshall. So yes, confirmation, uh, Simmons is closing in on Marshall and Marshall as well as closing in on Anagnosiadis. So Anagnosiadis really dropping back now uh, from the race lead. So the battle for second place is on. Anagnosiadis here is under threat of not actually making it onto the podium here. He's still P2, but he's got third and fourth right behind him. And Simmons now is sets the fastest lap of the race. That is a driver who has looked after tyres and is now waited for the last lap, last few laps here to really close in and go for a podium finish here. Yesterday, Simmons finishing in P11. A podium today would be well received for Angelina Simmons, who started this race P3, currently P4, down one position at the moment, but has had a consistent weekend, constantly within the top five. Third in qualifying, fifth in heat one, third in heat two, and right now she's looking for another third, maybe even a second place. Final lap ball goes out, and Marshall piles on the pressure here to Anagnostiadis, who is in second place. Toby Gale is clear by a full second. Anagnostiadis here in second place, though, is defending his spot on the podium. He won yesterday. Today is looking like it's going to be a different story, but will it be another podium for the Australian? Simmons is closing in on Marshall. If Simmons goes for the move here, Marshall 
and Anagnosiadis could break away. But again, they go defensive. Simon takes the optimal line. She's on the outside here. She's going to try and get the switch over. She can't get down the inside. She stays there in P4 at the moment. A podium finish for Angelina, uh, Angelina Simmons is millimetres away as they dive in towards the final chicane. There goes Gale, but around the outside, there goes Simmons. Toby Gale wins the final. He's delighted. Who's going to get on the podium, though? It is Anagnosiadis and Marshall who round out the top three. Angelina Simmons just couldn't quite get that move to work out, and she stays in P4, but Toby Gale now makes it a fourth different final winner in the junior category of this championship. That helps him out massively. It puts him fourth in the championship. He holds on to that one. It was fifth going into this weekend. So Toby Gale now fourth in the championship, closes the gap up by just one point to himself and William Marshall in the standings. Toby Gale, though, here at Valencia, is absolutely on it. Anagnosiadis still leads the championship. He's clear by some way ahead of Rypold. Marshall still there third, but one point behind now is your race winner in this one. Toby Gale takes the win ahead of James Anagnosiadis and William Marshall at the end of the final. Well, the rest of the field makes their way in towards Park Ferme. Let's have a look at the rest of the results. Simmons finishing in P4 ahead of Ella Hakkinen. Connor Clancy finishing in sixth place, three places gained from Prodrotti, uh, five places gained in P7. Dinia Islamov from Leonardo Poluzzi. Saramat Soy, nine places gained to finish in P10 ahead of Victoria Farfus, is seven places gained in P11. Case Aziza from Kasper Rypold. Max Murray from Isaac Say. Amelia Vishamirska from Axel Nocom, Vanessa Shilkanate from Michaela Hart, who rounds up the top 19. Katrina E gained six places to finish in the top 20 ahead of Kadia. Uh, Sujana Dandu from Dukovsky, Pavazniaya, Pazuto, 10 positions gained from Vitva. Sanjana Dandu from Adrianzen, uh, then it's Troxler, Kaur, and then Yerland, uh, Delay, and then the rest of the field as well. Capella from Gallen, the 34 finishers, Ebras and Nilas Malik, are the two retirements in that race. Well, a superb end to their final. And for this young man here, Toby Gale, let's see how he did it. Started this one on the front row of the grid. The start, not fully his way. Committed, though, round the outside there. You saw Nilas Malik in the background uh, going off the circuit. But... Uh, you can see they're so committed around the outside, just carried the speed and through would go Gale and holding on to second place. This angle really shows it here. You can see uh, alongside dropping back a little bit and then shoots forward and then takes it all the way around the outside of Angelina Simmons there. Really committed with the tyres there and the braking of turn number one. Uh, this was the moment further back. This was Nilas Malik from one angle getting speared off the circuit on the uh, start of that race very scary moment and there you can see yeah the contact just coming through and I think the initial contact wasn't actually with him he didn't go up in the air I think that may have been three carts involved in that one there but uh, two of them managing to keep it on the track and breaking away Gale got in the lead in the early stages of the race and well kind of held on to it really Angelina Simmons got past Anagnosiadis at that point that that kind of released Gale at that point because then uh, again a few laps later uh, Anagnosiadis would get back past uh, in towards turn number one. You would see Marshall here go down the inside of Leonardo Peruzzi. That would be uh, for P4 and five just behind. Uh, Ella Hakkinen under control there in that uh, area there of the race. That was how uh, Anagnosiadis got back up into P2. And that's what released uh, Gale at that point. The gap opened up. Uh, Gale had no pressure. He hadn't got to defend or anything like that. He stayed in position and uh, just uh, drove away at the end of that one. There was uh, Marshall diving down the inside of Ella Hakkinen. That is how he got up into the top running spots there. Hakkinen again uh, having to take the uh, offline there, not on the racing line. This was the moment that we lost uh, Christian Ebras there. And again, look, definitely contact there in the back of the cart, straight off the circuit there at turn uh, 17. And uh, certainly a scary moment to go off the circuit. There's Marshall diving down the inside of Angelina Simmons. That was how he got up 
into P3. Simmons then retaliated on this final lap, tried to go on the outside of turn 11, uh, tried to get the switch back here, but just couldn't get uh, the up and under. Then this moment here, Simmons right on the racing line here, trying to go around the outside, but the door just slammed closed. There was no way of getting past. But for Toby Gale, a superb final. He's delighted with that one. He takes the championship points. Give it up for the top three in the junior category. Please now welcome onto the podium uh, to present the winner's trophy, Dino Chiesa from Cart Republic to present the third place trophy to William Marshall. We now present the second place trophy to Australia's James Anagnostiaidis. And finally, your winner's trophy presented to Toby Gale. <laughs> Dino, please join the drivers there. Drivers, nice big smiles. Trophies high up in the air for me, please. I'm sure you can go higher than that. There we go. Perfect stuff. Nice big smiles then for all the photographers out there. Brilliant stuff for the top three, another superb final. If you'd all like to jump up onto the top step of the podium as well, nice and close uh, together, superb. And again, a beautiful final at the end of that one. Toby Gale clear by 2.2 seconds at the end of that final. A superb race as we head to France quarter next. Well, we'll now present the bottles of champagne. Dino, you are free to, to leave at this point. Uh, well done. I'm sure you don't want to get covered. Uh, there we go. Duck and cover. Drivers, you can relax now as we head to France quarter next. Three, two, one, it's champagne! <laughs> Well, they actually had quite a bit more fizz than uh, I thought they would, but uh, Toby Gale bearing the brunt of all of that. Thanks, James. There we go. Brilliant stuff, William. Uh, I'm just going to pop in here. Toby, it's been around this way. Uh, superb race on that one. Um, did you expect it? Uh, tough qualifying and all the way, and through those qualifying heats, you certainly put yourself in a, a prime position and claimed it in that final. Superb job. Thank you. Um, yeah, in quali, um, it was a bit disappointing getting sick. Um, it wasn't what we wanted, but we knew as a team we had the pace and we could win. Um, and throughout the day, we just um, made adjustments with the car, and, um, also with my driving, and we just pushed through, and in the end, it worked out. Francia Corta next. Are we looking forward to it? It's a, it's a well-known track. It's a modern track, but it's become a fan favorite. Are you looking forward to it? Yeah, a lot. Um, Francia Corta is a great track. Um, racing is really close there, and yeah, um, hopefully it goes well. Well, congratulations. Well done to our top three. Give it up one more time for your junior category. Yeah. <laughs>